generally speaking, much of the kind of mindfulness practices that we get in the West, we know are, are from Buddhist traditions. Uh, and so even though we practice them secularly, which is completely appropriate and uh, doesn't in any way disparage the tradition that they come from, uh, we can practice these secularly. They don't have anything to do with the religious affiliation. Uh, but it's also really interesting to kind of go into, all right, what are those people traditionally doing? Uh, what are these texts from Buddhism traditionally saying, oh, here's what this is helpful for, or here's how we can work with this. Um, so that's certainly an important part of my life and, and practice. And so I'll share a little bit with it uh, about it today. And again, these actually are not also not religious uh, inherently. Uh, it's more actually, at least the parts that, that I'll get into today are more kind of science of, of mind. Um, or learning kind of how to interact with your psychology. So there's an important part of kind of Buddhist meditation styles that is about these things that are called the, the five aggregates. And we won't go into all the aggregates today, but we will go into one, which is kind of important and very useful to work with in your personal life. And that's sometimes translated as feeling or feeling tone. So these are uh, just the kind of overarching sense of this is pleasant or this is unpleasant. And, or this is neutral. This is neither pleasant nor unpleasant. So it's pretty simple, nothing too complicated in that sense. I think we all inherently have a sense of what feels pleasant and what doesn't feel pleasant. Uh, we're actually much better at this than we know. And then there's this uh, distinction between this feels pleasant in my body or this feels pleasant in my mind. This is a mentally pleasant experience. So those are things that we'll kind of keep track of today in practice. So with that, let's take up a, a meditation posture that'll be solid for the next 15 to 20 minutes. Always it's good to balance comfort with a sense of kind of strength and firmness. So we don't want to be too comfortable, totally uh, hunched back on a couch. It's really nice if our spine can be relatively upright, but we also don't want to be tight. So we can let our shoulders drop, our face drop, our hips settle and soften into our seat, becoming heavy. And if we haven't already, we can close our eyes. Or just soften them if you prefer. Take a moment to notice whatever you notice. You might even notice your uncertainty in how to do this. And don't worry. Just allow your mind to notice whatever it wants to notice. Maybe a thought. Maybe a feeling in the body. Where is that feeling? <clears throat> Could be a sound. It'll be different from one moment to the next. And jumping right into it, see if there's a particular feeling tone, if you can catch it, with some of the different things that you notice. In this process, 
could even involve you verbally labeling things on the inside. Eventually, you don't even need to label them. You can just notice them. I notice a feeling in my tummy. Hmm. That's unpleasant in my body. Not so much mentally unpleasant, but unpleasant in my body. Or last night in practice, knowing I had a high blood sugar, I noticed that's mentally extremely unpleasant, even though physically I'm not feeling so many symptoms. And of course, these two blend with each other. Unpleasant physically becomes mental and vice versa. Whatever you're noticing now, whether it's a thought, feeling in the body, sound, just check in. Pleasant, unpleasant, neutral, mental or physical. Allow it to just be so. It helps to soften your body, especially when you notice something unpleasant. We'll return to this briefly, but let's begin to imagine that we can breathe in and out of the top of our head. So as we breathe in, use your full imagination to imagine that you're breathing in from the top of your head, filling up the confines of your head, your skull, and then breathing back out from the top of your head. Breathing into and out of your head. helps you, you can count these breaths going in and out of your head. Notice the cool sensation on the inhale, warmth on the exhale. breath, cool air filling your head. Soothing any active thoughts. Just pacifying them and breathing them out. And again, you can count one on the inhale, one on the exhale, two and two and so forth, if that helps.
Let's check in again. Without stopping our breath, continuing breathing in and out of the top of the head. What's the feeling tone like here? Pleasant, unpleasant, neutral. More mental in origin or physical. Really just focusing on this head area. Move from there and let our attention just slide down our head, our throat, our upper chest to the area right around our heart. And imagine now that the front of your chest opened up and you could breathe directly in and out of your heart. Just like we were breathing from the top of the head before, now we're breathing from the front of the chest. Each breath filling up the heart, each breath emptying out the heart. Could be sweet, you might notice some resonance, warmth. Could also be tender if your heart has any reason right now to be aching. Either way, just breathing in and out, soothing this heart space one breath at a time. Again, if counting is helpful, use it freely. Let's pull back up our contemplation of feeling tone. Is this pleasant? Is it unpleasant? Is it neutral? Mental or physical? Or both? What are you feeling in this hard space area? Where are you feeling? It? 
Make this an achievement task. Just soothe the heart and mind one breath at a time. Nothing to achieve. Completely leave this, but we will drop our attention down even further to our lower belly. Wherever feels like a comfortable place for you, rest your attention in your lower belly. Now, of course, this is a place that many of us have judgments about. And also just soften your body in this area. Let it do what it needs to do to relax, not perform. You're now breathing up from the ground into this lower belly area. Breathing up from your tailbone, perhaps. Filling up this lower belly with air. Only as much as is comfortable. And breathing back down into the ground. Just like that. It's always counting as welcomed. Make the goal, if we can even use that word, to just soothe and be kind to this lower belly area, which holds such deep bodily wisdom and gut feelings. Yet we're so frequently cut off from it because it's such a painful area, both physically and mentally. Allow it to express its feeling tones to you. Pleasant, unpleasant, neutral, mental or physical in nature. Your attention naturally gets roped up to your head and all of your thoughts. Just gently let it slide back down to your belly as if your brain just slipped all the way down into your belly. The core of your mind is there.
notice the cost of your unbalanced efforts to stay focused. I myself notice tension in my shoulders and face coming out of my attempt to stay focused. Notice the feeling tone. It's quite unpleasant to be so concerned with my focus. Less concerned. And letting go of any attention to that one area. May allow your attention to float freely from your tailbone to the top of your head. And just notice these feeling tones wherever they come up, wherever they present themselves. one second to the next second. You may notice anything. You may notice the feeling tone of thought that comes by, perhaps pleasant or unpleasant. You may notice pleasant feeling tone of being more settled, concentrated. You might notice the unpleasant feeling tone of antsiness of being ready to be done with the practice. Eight years into practice, I still feel that frequently. So completely normal for feeling that. For a final moment, let go of any attempt to pay attention to anything in particular. And just sit there. close of the third bell. Feel free to sit as long as you like. And come back only when you're prepared.
word for this healing tone traditionally. It's a Vedana, which literally can be translated as how you know, or the way that you know. Like this is the way that you know. And so we might ask the way that we know what? And that's a very good question that I think we should all be curious about. What is it that we come to know from these feeling tones? What is it that we come to know?